Hey guys, it's Tanika and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a giant tub of empties to go through with you. I do like to do these quite often, so I will link previous empty videos down in the description box. If you enjoy them, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and let's dive into this giant ass box of empties. All right, I guess we'll just start from the top. So I've got some hair care items here. This is the Dove Refresh and Care Dry Shampoo. Now I, I liked it. I haven't really tried a bad dry shampoo to really know the difference, but it did its job. It dried up those oily roots when I needed it in between washes and I would repurchase it again. It smelled nice. It lasted a long time, so it's a winner for me. Next, I have this L'Oreal Elnet Satin Hairspray. I like to buy the really big cans because they're usually like better value for money. Now this says it's an extreme hold with a natural touch. I like to use it when I'm curling my hair. I do think that it gives a nice natural touch, but it's definitely not an extreme hold hairspray. I do have another one of these and I have used it to try and flatten my flyaways today and they are still like frizzing up a little bit. So it's not the strongest hold hairspray, but I do like that it leaves not a crispy feel to your hair, especially when I've curled it. I want it to feel nice and soft and bouncy, not crisp. So I like it, but it's definitely not extreme hold. Next, I have some products that I didn't really like. First up is the Only Good Natural Deodorant. So I have a natural deodorant that I use and I love. I've got it in here. I'll talk about it soon. But I thought I would mix it up and try something different. I saw this in Chemist Warehouse. It was pretty affordable. I thought it had cute packaging, but unfortunately it was a no from me. So I've got this problem where one armpit, it's just rotten, it stinks. I don't know what's up with it. The other one's fine, but my left one just wants to create BO and it's not pleasant. So I need a deodorant that's going to stop that. This. It just wasn't it. Within a few hours, I could smell myself and I'm like, God damn it, I stink. So it is a 100% natural deodorant. It's palm free, aluminium free. It's got a bunch of ingredients down the side here that it doesn't contain, but unfortunately it did not work for me. Next, I have the Skin Physics Dragon Blood Ultra Plumping Night Cream. Now this one was sent to me in PR to try out. You can pick it up from Priceline. And I was really excited. It was a nice, rich moisturizer. I thought it would be perfect for winter. But unfortunately, the scent is just very floral and very overpowering. It was too much for me. Even smelling it now, it kind of reminds me of like an old lady scent. It's very, very perfumed. And when I applied it on my face, the scent didn't go away. I was laying there and I could still smell it and I had to go and try and wipe it off because it was so strong. It was just a bit unpleasant for me. So unfortunately, I was not a fan of this one. Another moisturizer that didn't really do it for me is the Neutrogena Bright Boost. So this was a new release from Neutrogena. They did come out with a few different products in the Bright Boost range. I love some of the other Neutrogena moisturizers, so I thought I would give this a go because it claimed to give a brighter complexion and I thought it would be a really nice daytime moisturizer and how cute is the pink packaging, seriously. So I did use it all up because I didn't want to waste it, but I would not repurchase this one. It did have a bit of a shimmer through it, so I think that's what gave it the brightening effect on your skin. It did claim to contain AHA, but I found the brightening come from the shimmer that was put in it. And then once applied, it felt nice, but within one to two minutes of it drying on the skin, my skin felt really tight. It didn't actually feel plump and moisturized. It was like, ah, ah, like, it felt like I needed to moisturize again. So I wouldn't repurchase this one. I will definitely stick to my other Neutrogena moisturizer that I love. And I actually have three of them here. I've got two of the gel creams and one of the night concentrate. So this is the Hydro Boost range. And I freaking 
love this moisturizer. I only ever buy it when it's on sale, so I usually pick it up for around $16 to $20, which I think is a pretty good price. I like to use this Hydro Boost in the mornings. It's a really nice lightweight gel consistency, but even though it's lightweight, it gives a lot of hydration. I use this all throughout winter and it was more than enough hydration for the cooler months, but because it is a more lightweight formula, it's also really great for summer because it doesn't feel heavy on your skin and it dries rather quickly. So in those warmer months where you just don't wanna be feeling wet and sticky, it's a really nice moisturizer. And then I've got the Hydro Boost Night Concentrate. This one says it's specifically formulated for nighttime use. It progressively releases intensive moisture. So the difference between this one is that it did have these little blue balls in it. There's actually one just on the rim there. And so I believe that is what gives the extra boost of hydration. This one is still a gel-like formula, but as described, it gives that extra bit of hydration, which makes it perfect for nighttime. I have both of these in my bathroom opened and in use. I love this moisturizer and I'm so glad I was able to find an affordable option from Priceline. And also with the scent, they're not heavily fragranced. Well, actually, I think they're fragrance free. They do have a smell. It's like a nice refreshing smell, but it's not like a fragrance floral smell. Does that make sense? Next, I have another moisturizer. This was just a sample from Murad, and it is the Hydrodynamic Ultimate Moisture. This moisturizer was more of a rich, creamy formula, but still lightweight on the skin. I enjoyed using it at nighttime. Now, I'm sure if I compared ingredients between the Murad and the Neutrogena, there'd be some kind of difference. But for me, I just want a moisturizer to hydrate my skin. The Neutrogena one does that. It's more of an affordable price, so that's the one I'm going for. This was a nice moisturizer though, and I would repurchase it again if you prefer to use more high-end skincare. Another product from Murad is the Invisi Scar Resurfacing Treatment, and I loved this product. So here is a close up of what the bottle looks like. And this contains BHA, I'm pretty sure, and vitamin C. And it's a treatment that helps with pigmentation and acne scars. And oh my God, did it work. I used it a few nights a week and I found on any pigmentation I had from breakouts, it visibly reduced it. And if I had new breakouts, I would apply it and they would also be reduced within a day or two. This is a kind of silicon feeling texture. A little bit of it does go a long way. I used it at nighttime. I really, really loved it and would definitely repurchase it. Murad actually has a dedicated Instagram to this product. So if it's something you're interested in, I would definitely go and check it out. It is expensive, but it works. So there you go. Oh, I have another one here from Murad, and this is the Environmental Shield Rapid Age Spot Correcting Serum. So this product here contains vitamin C, which I find works so well for my skin. I get really good results when I use vitamin C consistently. It really helps to fade the spots and it makes my skin look so much brighter. It does also claim to help with fine lines and wrinkles. For me, I didn't see much of a difference there. I feel as though retinol is the only ingredient that really helps with my fine lines personally, but vitamin C is something I must have in my skincare routine. I like to use it in the mornings and I just see amazing results. Again, this one is rather expensive. It's over $100, so definitely something to look into and research. Make sure you're making the right decision, but I would recommend it. I think it's a really gentle vitamin C to introduce into your skincare routine. Next, I have some oils. First up is the Rosehip Plus Rosehip Oil. I have used and loved this for years now. I did used to use it on my face a lot, but I've steered away from that a bit and I've started using it on my decolletage area. So every night when I get out of the shower, I like to apply it all over my chest, up my neck, and then whatever remains, I rub into the back of my hands. I feel like you know, I'm creeping up to that age. I really need to start taking better care of my skin before it looks really old and wrinkly and dry. I just want it to be nice and hydrated and 
moisturized, you know, nice and plump. This rosehip oil is quite affordable. I pick it up from Chemist Warehouse and it's just a really nice rich oil that gives the hydration to the skin that I'm looking for. And as I said, I really love to use it over my body. Next, I have the Youth to the People Superberry Hydrate and Glow Oil. I'm pretty sure this is my second or third bottle of this. This facial oil is so beautiful. It's really lightweight. It does have a bit of a fruity scent. It's not too overpowering though. The reason I love it is because it is so lightweight and moisturizing. It has a bunch of great ingredients. Youth to the People is actually a really good brand. I love their skincare. I was obsessed with their moisturizers, but because I went through them so fast, I did need a more affordable option, but I would 100% recommend their moisturizers as well. But back to this oil, it's rich in omega-3, 6, and 9 fatty acids, which helps with dull and dry skin. It also contains a bit of vitamin C and E. It really softens the skin and was a beautiful nighttime oil. I would definitely repurchase this one. Just jumping back to the rosehip oil real quickly, the reason I stopped using that on my face is because it is more of a rich, heavier oil, which is why I do love using the Youth to the People on my face because it is more lightweight. Just a little side note there. Next, I have the Skinstitute Multi-Active Mist, and this is a spray toner. Now, I did like this product, but personally, I don't see that much of a difference when I'm using a toner in my skincare routine. It has a lot of great reviews from people, but as I said, I just don't see that much of a difference. I did enjoy the product. I love that it is a spray instead of having to put the product onto a cotton pad. It has really good claims and ingredients. It says it's got hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, it eases skin redness and irritation. It improves texture and clarity, but I just, nah, I wouldn't repurchase it again. I do love Skinstitute products though. I currently use their Gentle Cleanser and the Glycolic Scrub. I love that for when my skin is feeling textured, but this one, yeah, not for me. And then there's no point doing all this skincare if you're not using the number one product, and that is sunscreen. So here I have the Cancer Council Face Day Wear Moisturizer. I love this sunscreen, and so does my partner Clinton. I've really been onto him about using SPF, and he's quite picky. This is the only one he enjoys out of all the ones I've made him try. It's 50 plus, it's fragrance free, it's a very lightweight sunscreen and it absorbs into the skin very quickly. So if you're like me and you put makeup on afterwards, you don't have to wait like 20 minutes to do so. You can just get straight into it. I picked this up from Chemist Warehouse. It's pretty affordable and it does the job. So. Can't complain, I go through them pretty quickly. Next, I have the Schmitz Natural Deodorant, and this is the one I mentioned earlier that I freaking love. This works. If you're like me and you get a little bit of BO, this is going to stop it. It is amazing. It does come in a fragrance-free option, which I do enjoy. I also love this lavender and sage. If you haven't used a natural deodorant before, it is a bit of a different texture. This one's got a bit funny now, so we won't look at that. But it's like a rough bar of soap. It's kind of the only way I can explain it. I did used to buy this online from iHerb. They do stock it at Adore Beauty as well, but now Priceline stocks it. So I don't have to wait and buy it online. I can just go into store. I'm pretty sure it's around 12 to $20. I can't quite remember, but they are the different prices I've paid for it from different websites and whatnot. I love this deodorant. I don't think I can ever use anything else because this has just been such a winner for me. And then lastly for skincare kind of transitioning into makeup, I have the Garnier 2-in-1 Express Eye Makeup Remover. Now this is a oil-based eye makeup remover. I only use this kind of eye makeup remover how many times can I say that? When I use eyeliner or if I've used false lashes. I found it worked pretty well to get off that heavy makeup. I repurchased it again. That's it. 
It was good. Now on to makeup, let me get in here. I'll start with one of my absolute favorites. We all know by now the L'Oreal Infallible Anti-Redness Primer. This primer is the best. If you have a lot of redness to your skin, this neutralizes it like nothing else. I did have a little bit of a moment with this the other day though. I actually used it on my younger sister and she has quite dry and textured skin and this it did not work for her. It clung to her dry patches and left little green splotches everywhere. It did not blend in. Now, I've never experienced that before, so heads up if you've got dry skin that this might not work for you. I have normal combination skin and it works wonderfully for me. I've repurchased this plenty of times and will continue to do so. Next, I've got some foundations starting with the NYX Total Control Drop Foundation. I love this. It's actually been a while since I used it. I do have another one open in my drawer, but it is such a lightweight and a long lasting formula. The bottle is quite small. It only comes with 13 mils and it does retail for almost $30. So I only ever buy it when it's on sale. But if you're after something that is very lightweight on the skin, this is perfect. You can build up the coverage from light to full. It is an amazing foundation. Then I have the L'Oreal True Match and I have the shade 0.5N Porcelain. In the NYX, I use the shade Porcelain. This True Match foundation has been my go-to lately, and I actually have another one here that I am pouring the last bit of the contents out to use it up. This is just such a comfortable foundation. It sits really nicely on my skin, feels very lightweight. I get a good medium to full coverage. It's long-lasting. It's just, it's beautiful. It leaves a really nice satin matte finish as well so it doesn't look too dry or cakey on the skin i just it's one of my favorites from the drugstore and then if we're talking full coverage extra long lasting my favorite is the maybelline super stay now this here is the shade 03 true ivory and this is the lightest shade that you can get here in australia this one is still a tad too dark for me, so I do like to mix it with some lightning drops or a lighter foundation that I have in my collection. This is so full coverage and it is extra long lasting. It does have a matte finish and it just looks beautiful on the skin. If I know it is going to be over 30 degrees and I need my makeup to last all day, this is the one I go for. Next, I have some brow products and this is the Maybelline Total Temptation Brow Definer. I have this in the shade Blonde. Now, I used to be obsessed with this. It was my go-to brow pencil. It does have a like a diamond shape applicator, which is pretty easy to use, but I have recently fallen in love with the Maybelline Brow Ultra Slim. So I do really like the Maybelline Brow Pencils. I think if you are after a dupe for the benefit, I can't remember what it's called, but it has a similar shape, then I would definitely go for this one. It's a beautiful texture, creamy enough that it glides onto the skin, but also really long lasting. Then I have some brow gels. This is the Essence Make Me Brow. I have repurchased this multiple times. It's only around $5. I have the shade 01 Blondie Brows. It has the most tiny little wand, which makes it so easy to use and get up in those brow hairs. It also gives them a lot of texture and like a lot of fluffiness. So your brows look nice and bushy. I really love this and will continue to repurchase. And then I have the Designer Brands Brow Power Tinted Brow Gel. Now this one I just used up because I had it. It's not something I would repurchase. It wasn't a standout product. The wand is tiny, easy to use, but it doesn't give me as much like volume and fluffiness as the Essence one does. Next, I have another eyeliner. This is the Rimmel Exaggerate Eye Definer in the brown shade. This is just a wind up like creamy eyeliner. I like to use this for tight lining and I prefer using a brown shade because I think it just looks a bit more natural for my complexion and it's really good for day-to-day -day use. Tight lining makes such a difference. 
especially if you have blonde lashes like me, they can look a little gappy sometimes. So tight lining just fills in those gaps and makes your lash line look nice and thick. I've already repurchased this. I love it. Next, I have the Mulberline. Mulberline? <laughs> what? Next, I have the Maybelline Falsies Lash Lift Mascara. And this is hands down my favorite Maybelline mascara. Oh my God. There is just something different about this one. I don't know what it is, but it's got an hourglass shaped wand and it's that perfect formula where it's not too wet and it's not too dry. It's good to use from the moment you open it. It doesn't dry out quickly. I got a few good months use out of this and it's just amazing. It lengthens the lashes, it separates them, it gives them volume. It does everything I want in a mascara and I love the wand size. I feel like it's really easy to use. I don't get it all over my damn eyes when I'm using it. It also dries really quickly so when I blink, because I do have long lashes, sometimes it gets on my eyelids but because it does dry quickly, it doesn't transfer so. Thank you. All right guys, we're nearly there, okay? <laughs> Next, I have a lip product, and this is one of my favorites, the Astralis Girl Boss Demi Matte Lip Cream in the shade Empower. Now, huh, caught it. Now, they actually changed the name of this. This is the Demi Matte Lip Cream, and I have a new one, and it's called the Velvet Matte Lip Cream. But I find the formula is exactly the same. They did just change the doe foot applicator. This old one has a flat, doe foot whereas the new one has a bit of a curve in it but anyway this is the most universal nude for me i feel like it goes with pretty much any eyeshadow look that i do it is so comfortable on the lips it's very opaque it does dry down to that demi matte formula so it's still comfortable on the lips while also being long lasting i would actually like to pick up a few more shades from this range because it's a very very comfortable lipstick you're not going to believe this but i only have one of the models prefer mineral finishing veil powders in this whole empty box what? That's crazy. If you've been here a while, you would know that this powder is my absolute favorite. It's a loose powder, a very light shade, so it works perfectly for my fair skin. And what I love about it is that it's not a matte finish. It has this slight sheen to it that just leaves the skin looking so healthy and glowy. Whenever this is on sale, I purchase whatever is on the shelf because I friggin' love it. It is such a beautiful powder. And if you can get your hands on it, I would highly recommend trying it out. And then lastly, that's right, lastly, I have two setting sprays. First up is the L'Oreal Infallible Magic Setting Spray. Now, I picked this one up when it was on sale to give it a go. I actually love this one here, the Rimmel Insta Fix and Go. I've been using this for years, but I thought I would try out something else. This did do a really good job at locking my makeup in place, but it's pretty expensive. It's around $30 full price, whereas the Rimmel one is only like 13 or 14. So of course I'm going to go for that one, but if you want to try it out, it was really good. And then one of my favorite setting sprays is the L'Oreal Shake and Glow, the mist on this. Oh my God. Okay. That was dramatic, but if you've been watching some of my videos, you would know I've been testing out the Maybelline glass spray and the spritzer on that is rooted. So I can pour it into this bottle. Okay, amazing, fantastic. Anyway, this spray is beautiful. So as I was saying, the mist on this is just lovely. It is so soft and gentle and it just, you know, it gives a beautiful soft spray on the skin and it leaves such a gorgeous, glowy, dewy look to the complexion, but nothing too wet. Like it doesn't make the rest of your face look oily. It just makes those areas look nice and glowy when you turn your head in the light. Oh, I love it. I've repurchased it probably three times now and I will continue to do so. Oh my God, all right. Well, that is everything for this empties video. If you enjoyed watching, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. If you did make it 
all the way to the end of this video, leave the little whale emoji because I think it's really cute. <laughs> if you want to check out any of my other empties videos, I will have the playlist linked down below. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.